What happens when a lithium-ion battery meets water? To uncover the answer, we've set up a simple yet revealing experiment. On one side, an engineer stands carefully holding a lithium-ion battery. Driven by data and a love for science, he approaches problems with precision and curiosity. Opposite him, a firefighter grips a lithium metal battery, eager to see what will happen. While he shares the engineer's passion for problem solving, his fascination with fire has him hoping for a burst of energy. So, what sets these two batteries apart? And will they ignite the moment they hit the water? You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. Man, I was really hoping for some fire but realistically wasn't expecting it because inside this right here, while there is lithium ion chemistry, there's no lithium metal. But when you look at the lithium metal battery, they're both of these containers, they're sealed up. So how do we actually get this stuff to catch on fire? Well, I teamed back up with Luke over at Electric Goddess to find out. This is a argon environment glove box. So this allows you to uh open cells and make modifications to cells without having atmospheric humidity and oxygen uh, effectively poison that cell's ability to perform well again afterwards. Okay. And so... Uh, it's probably a lot safer to take apart a cell inside here as well as far as thermal runaway is concerned. It, it's true. They, they still can though. So beware. Um, because they provide their own oxygen source Sure. So they can actually, uh, while, uh, while they're still tight in the cell, you know, once, once it's expanded out into the argon environment, then it will tend to self-extinguish without having oxygen to, to contain that, ox you know, that, that oxygen near it. But when it's still coiled up in the cell or in the pouch, if you make a mistake in the glove box, it will still uh, go into thermal runaway from its own liberated oxygen source for a bit at least not saying it's as severe and uh, not quite as aggressive yeah so we, how do you actually get the parts inside of here okay you uh for for small pieces you use this chamber and for big pieces you use this chamber in fact if it's close there i can do this um you open this passage you put your your tools or equipment on this tray and uh you roll it in and then you start this pump the beauty of a chamber like this is uh, you can embed temp sensors and then reseal the cell or you can extract electrolyte or add things to the electrolyte and reseal the cell. Um, you can embed reference electrodes like a, a third electrode on the cell rather than just a positive and negative tab but a midpoint like a lithium metal reference electrode. Okay. And, and this can show you what percentage of the cells uh, losses are due to anode and what percentage of the cell's losses are due to cathode to help optimize to your cell design. And something I love to do with this box is uh, use a, a lithium fluoride glass slide to put a window in cells so that as you charge and discharge you can observe um, the color change uh, of, of the, the graphite material. It, it turns first uh, from black to silvery and then to a gold color when it's uh, reaching max lithiation and it's it's beautiful but it's also valuable to understand uh, how those particle size changes you know it's something that you can take that sample out and put it under the key and then and uh, quantify uh, particle sizes and that's that's one of the the beauties of having this box is you can you can work on the cell live then even even as simple as a jar that you close in here becomes an argon environment for your uh, you know for your work with that sample. And so I like to put um, high quality glass optical discs in the lids of jars so that uh, I can do microscopy on my samples while they're still in an argon environment uh, the whole time. That it sounds really useful for an art research and development type it, uh, of situation. It is, yeah, for samples that are destroyed by atmospheric humidity or oxygen. So we, we can go upstairs now and you got a whole bunch more equipment, correct? That's right, yeah. Excited to get your cell cycling for the experiment you're going to run. I'll, I'll show you where those fixtures are. By cycling, he means he's going to get those batteries at the right state of charge. The goal is to test out three different battery cells. We're going to test out two rechargeable lithium-ion battery cells, one at a low state of charge and one at a high state of charge. 
And I want this to be an accurate representation, so it takes specialized equipment to charge or discharge the battery cells properly. We're also going to test a non-rechargeable lithium metal battery, so you can see the difference. As we tear those batteries apart, I'll talk about what makes them different. Okay, in, in this setup we have a high precision cycler here. Um, this is a custom squid stat that's 60 amps a channel, four channels, and it can be paralleled to make 240 amps into one channel. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty sweet machine, it's very precise. Let's just measure individual cycle level degradation from running uh, different effects. And I'll show you uh, for your test today, we're gonna load this up into a, a channel here. Okay. We have uh, Kelvin measurements. This is a, a critical thing for measuring cells. This little probe in the middle is electrically isolated from that current collector around it and, and the same is true for this side so that it measures the, the voltage without the effects of the current drop from this joint on those tips. Uh, they, they call that a Kelvin measurement, a four wire Kelvin measurement and uh, it's, it's critical when you're testing a battery. We have your other cell T1 in here as well. And one thing I want to comment on is it seems like a lot of this equipment is basically home built. I assume when it comes to battery yeah. testing, you can't just go to the store and buy a, you know, buy a piece of equipment that does this. Yeah, there's there's lots of stuff for sale, but not lots of stuff for sale that does the current that I'm looking for. Yeah, so uh, really everything needs to be custom built, and, that's, that's and right. a lot of a lot of work went into this lab, from it's, what I can tell. It's true. Now, if we wanted to be delicate, the glove box is absolutely the way to take one of these apart, and probably the safer method but I'm more of a brute force kind of guy. So let's use this saw. So I recommend nobody cuts apart a battery. This is actually a dangerous operation. That's why I'm wearing FR. I've got something for the fumes in case it does kick off in a thermal runaway, but let's get this going and see what happens. Success. The battery cell didn't go into thermal runaway, and I really didn't expect it to because this cell is at a low state of charge, so it's a lot safer to deal with. But that was the easy part. The hard part is peeling back all this steel can to get access to the jelly roll. Ultimately, I want to take it apart all the way and then put the internal material in water to see what happens. Most people don't understand what's inside of a lithium ion battery. Now a lithium ion battery, that's the rechargeable type. We'll get to lithium metal later on. But within a lithium ion battery, there's three different layers. You have an anode, you have a separator layer, and a cathode. Now the anode and the cathode, that is only aluminum foil and copper foil. The copper foil has a graphite coating and the aluminum foil has a lithium ion based chemistry. So there's actually no lithium metal inside of a lithium ion battery. There's also very little electrolyte inside of these battery cells. In fact, most electrolyte absorbs into the material that you see here, and when taken apart, it evaporates very quickly. If I were to run my fingers across this layer of material, which I don't recommend, you really would not feel any electrolyte on your fingers. So let's see what happens. Low state of charge jelly roll versus water in three, two, one. Not really exciting, is it? Exactly what I expected though, because again, there's no lithium metal in this lithium ion battery. It's not a reactive metal. So no fireworks, nothing too exciting, just a few bubbles. But what happens if we have a high state of charge? And more importantly, can we even take apart a high state of charge battery without a fire? I can add that this is definitely not advisable to cut open a, uh, a charged cell at, at a high state of charge. <laughs> That's exactly what I was expecting. <laughs>
Since we needed to know what happens when this fully charged jelly roll goes into water, we have to be able to take the cell apart to get it in water, which is going to be a real challenge. So we went back to the drawing board and decided to try a different approach. Ultimately, this sander worked out and we were able to open up the cell and get all the material peeled away. So what do you think? Are we going to see fire as soon as this hits the water? Fully charged jelly roll going into water in 3, 2, 1. I had a little bit of hope that we'd see a bit more of a violent reaction, but it turns out, again, because there's no lithium metal inside of this battery, it's not water reactive. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize. So what happens when we do take apart a lithium metal battery and throw it in water? Well, for starters, let me tell you what a lithium metal battery is. It is a non-rechargeable battery. It's much different than the lithium ion battery, and you can buy them at almost any store. Inside of a lithium metal battery is a strip of elemental lithium, as well as magnesium dioxide. That's what all this black material is. Lithium metal is extremely reactive, so now that I have one end of this can open, let's see what happens when we drop it in the water without actually removing the jelly roll. Three. Two, one. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked. I really expected this lithium metal to react with the water. But because it's tightly coiled inside of that jelly roll and still in the steel canister, I think that's preventing the water to really get in contact with the lithium metal. So let's take it out, unroll it a little bit, and see what happens. Lithium metal in water in three, two, one. There it goes. Now those were the fireworks I was expecting. Lithium metal is highly reactive, and all that black gunk you see in the water, that's the magnesium dioxide. Now while we had fire and that lithium metal reacted with the water, it wasn't quite as energetic as I was hoping. So let's try for something a little bit more. I'm gonna take apart this battery cell and we're gonna see what happens. Now one comment, do not try this at home. So this is really reactive in water, so we should see a pretty good pop. Uh, safety first. All right, in three, two, one. I was hoping for something a little bit more spectacular, so let's try something new. For the second time, I'm gonna wrap this around the New York hook and dunk it right in the water. Ready? In three, two, one. That was a lot better than last time, but I was really hoping for this fish tank to explode. So 